Welcome to worship with St. Andrew's Lutheran Church of Grand Rapids, Minnesota. This is our recharge worship service. It is our last recharge worship service of the school year. Next week already, we go outside and down to the lake uh, for what we call WOW worship on Wednesdays. And I hope that you can be part of that as well. Those of you online, we're not streaming that outside. I don't have electricity out there. And sometimes even when I do have electricity, things don't go quite right. You may have noticed we're starting a couple minutes late. We had a little panic there. I had a little panic in the control booth, but we've got it work. If you're seeing this right now, we got it worked out. Welcome to those of you worshiping online, even e either live right now at uh, 6 o'clock on Wednesday or whenever you have found this on either Facebook or on YouTube. And welcome to those of you who are worshiping in the sanctuary. I'm glad that you are here and that we can worship together. Again, WOW starts next Wednesday. Sundays will continue to stream like we are right now. Sundays at 9 a.m. You're welcome, those of you, all of you, those of you are online to, to join us in the sanctuary, uh, the rules or our policies and procedures have changed a little bit. For those who are fully vaccinated, masks are now optional. For those who are not fully vaccinated, masks remain uh, required. So keep that in mind. You can always pre-register online, but you need not if you don't want to. It could just expedite the sign-in process as you come to worship because we're going to have to continue to uh, have people's names and contact their telephone number in case we would have to do any uh, contact tracing for uh, this COVID time. So thank you for doing that. So you can continue to sign up online, but it's not uh, mandatory. Love to have you. Boy, I think that might be all I'm going to say right now. Uh, those of you in the sanctuary, welcome to worship. I do invite you to, to stand, and we're going to join in singing a set of three songs. Uh, yeah, let's sing. This is a song that we started singing last week for the first time, My Savior, My God. 
I am not skilled to understand what God has built, what God has planned. I only know at His right hand.
Lord God, we do come to you when the sun is shining and bright and when the storms are raging as well. We come to you knowing that, that you are good, that you have us, that we are in your hands and that no matter what is happening, you are always with us. Oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we lift our praises to you this evening. Amen. I invite you to be seated. A reading from John 3, 1 through 17. There was a man of the Pharisees called Nicodemus, a ruler of the Judeans. He came to Jesus by night. Rabbi, he said to him, we know that you're a teacher who's come from God. Nobody can do the signs that you're doing unless God is with him. Let me tell you the solemn truth, replied Jesus. Unless someone has been born from above, they won't be able to seeking God's kingdom. How can somebody possibly be born, asked Nicodemus, when they're old? You're not telling me that they can go back a second time into the mother's womb and be born, are you? I'm telling you the solemn truth, replied Jesus. Unless someone is born from water and spirit, they can't enter God's kingdom. Flesh is born from flesh, but spirit is born from spirit. Don't be surprised that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it wants to, and you hear the sound it makes. But you don't know where it is coming from or where it's going to. That is what it's like with someone who is born from the Spirit. How can this be so? asked Nicodemus. Well, well, replied Jesus. You're a teacher of Israel, and yet you don't know about all this? I'm telling you the solemn truth. We're talking about things we know about. We're giving evidence about things we've seen. But you won't admit our evidence. If I told you earthly things and you don't believe, how will it be that if I ever tell you, he if I tell you heavenly things, are you going to believe them? And nobody has gone up into heaven except the one who came down from the heaven, the Son of Man. So just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, in the same way the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may share in the life of God's new age. This, you see, is how much God loved the world, enough to give his only special Son, so that everyone who believes in him should not be lost, but should share in the life of God's new age. After all, God didn't send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but so that the world could be saved by him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I noticed something there. When I use voice recognition, son was spelled S-U-N there. It should have been S-O-N. I was dictating that <laughs> lesson there, and it should have been son as in Jesus. And with that side note... <laughs> I want you to know that it is finally going to happen. I have been waiting years for this. I signed up for it a year ago already and signed a contract. What I'm talking about is the GigaZone. The GigaZone from Paul Bunyan Communications. I have been waiting for it. It promises up to 1,000 megabits per second upload and download speeds. Now, just know what this means for me personally. I checked things out this morning at my house. My download speeds were 48.8 megabits per second. My upload speed was just barely above when I get the GigaZone, it's not going to be just five. It's going to be up to 1,000 gigabits per second. 
phenomenal. I'm looking forward to it. When this pandemic began, my slow speed. See, I'm still on copper. Copper wires. None of this fancy schmancy fiber optic network that I'm going to be connected to pretty soon. They're working down my road. Kim, are they working down your road? They're working down my road right now with the gigazone. It's coming. Um, anyways, I'm talking about the gigazone. Because as excited as I am about it, I don't really understand how it works. Can any of you claim to know how the internet really works? I mean, I know that somehow through copper or this glass fiber optic network, that's going to be so fast and I'm so excited about it, um, that somehow a signal comes through, right? But how does it know what signal to send to what device in my house? Especially if, if I'm watching something on TV which is... For me, it's all streamed. I have YouTube TV. And my wife is watching something on her iPad maybe. And maybe we're, someone else is listening to music or I don't know. How does it know what device to send it to? And then it gets more complicated. My TV isn't actually plugged into anything. Okay, power. But it's not plugged into the internet. My phone certainly isn't. My computer isn't. I don't have one of those fancy Ethernet connectors, it's all Wi-Fi, so somehow the signal and this crisp picture and the sound that's just right and it knows what device to go to gets there through the air it's a holy mystery no, it's not a holy mystery, but it's a mystery how does it happen? well I know it happens <laughs> because I experience it, right? I watch my TV or I watch, I can stream things and I can shop online and all that stuff. It works. I know that because that's been my experience. And all I can do is say, woohoo, in response. What does this have to do with anything? I'm glad you asked. I'm beginning to wonder myself. This Sunday is Trinity Sunday in the life of the church. And Trinity Sunday is all about celebrating what most Christians celebrate and affirm, that there is one God known in three persons. Hmm. Did you know that the word Trinity doesn't even appear in the Bible? It doesn't. It's not a biblical word. But we have to start constructing something as soon as we begin reading the Bible. Because the Bible describes one God and then goes on to describe the Creator as God and Jesus as God and the Holy Spirit as God. But there's one God. What are we to make of that? So is there one God or three gods? Well... Yes and no. There's one God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh. But this one God is known in, as three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes, there are three persons of the Trinity, but no, they're not all referring to the same person. Oh, and I thought the internet was funny and weird to understand and difficult to understand. Theologians throughout the centuries have been trying to describe in a way that people can understand what the Trinity is all about. Augustine or Augustine, depending on how you prefer to pronounce it, uh, tried to describe the Trinity in terms of relationship. There is the lover, the beloved, and love. There is the lover, God the creator. There is this spiritual force, this spiritual energy, God the spirit. And then there is this aspect of God that is 
I don't even know if this is a word, enfleshed. My, my spell checker didn't like it when I was writing. Enfleshed, you know, uh, that, that, that God is somehow in the bodily realm, our realm. And it's in the interaction of, or some people call it the dance of, the three that sustains life, creates life, and animates life. Get it? Me neither. Not holy and full. Fully. Trinity Sunday. What do we make of it? I don't know if we'll ever be able to fully, I know we won't be able to fully describe the Trinity. It is the biblical witness, certainly, that there is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There's that biblical witness because that's how people have experienced God. And they try to put language to it then. God is creator. Go outside, look out the window. It's a gorgeous day. I don't see any deer right now. But it's a gorgeous thing. The beauty and wonder of creation. God the creator. That's how I experience God. And then we read in scripture that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Prior to that it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word, which is Jesus, was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have this experience of Jesus. To this day, you and I still read of Jesus' life. To this day, you and I still listen to his teachings and follow his teachings. To this day, you and I are able to experience the life into which Jesus invites us. To this day, right? It's our today experience. And then... Last week we had Pentecost, and we talked about the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, that God is with us now, moving in us, and comforting us, and leading us, and guiding us, and doing all of that, coming alongside of us, literally, is what Perikletos means. We say that because that's been our experience. I don't get how it all works, but like the internet... It's my experience. I know it works because it's my experience. People have tried to describe year after year and century after century this trinity, three and one and one and three, the blessed holy trinity. But we come back to experience and the biblical witness. In our reading from John that Nikki read, John 3 1 to 17. It was chosen in the appointed texts for Pentecost Sunday in this cycle of reading called the lectionary because all three persons of the Trinity show up. There are certain times when the Trinity shows up all at the same time. I think about like Jesus' baptism is another time. A voice from heaven, God the Holy Spirit, or God the Creator, uh, says, this is my son, Jesus waiting in the water. And then the Holy Spirit comes like a dove. You got all three. Well, in this text, we have all three also, and that's why it was chosen for Trinity Sunday. We have uh, Jesus, of course, talking with Nicodemus, speaking to him about this Holy Spirit. It's like wind. We, know, we don't really know where it's coming from or where it's going, but it's there. And like me with the internet and us with, the, with the, the, the Trinity itself, Nicodemus doesn't really get it. He doesn't understand. But I would submit to you that just because he doesn't understand then doesn't mean he didn't eventually. And I say that because Nicodemus shows up again in the story. By the end of the story, Nicodemus had experienced something. And that experience led him to become close to Jesus. I don't know exactly what that experience was. I don't believe it was like that and flipping a switch. Although for some people, coming to faith is like that. And they call it, we call it, being born again. Uh, 
our translation tonight and other translations call it being born from above. So it's a God thing. And it might take time. That's that eventual growth or continual growing in the spirit has been my experience. Not a flip of the switch. But something happened, I believe, that Nicodemus experienced. Because at the end of the story, it was Nicodemus, along with a guy by the name we know better, Joseph of Arimathea, who took Jesus' body off the cross and placed it in a tomb. Something happened. Nicodemus experienced something. My hope and prayer for you, for us, for all, is that we would have an experience, that we would experience God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit coming to us, filling us, leading us, guiding us, embracing us, so that we might know, so that you might know that unconditional love of God. The unconditional love that God has for you and for everyone. It's that experience that will validate for you who God is. And that's available to you today. Amen. We're going to sing a uh, a song. It's a creed. Uh, we believe. It's the first time we've sung it at Recharge, but um, it's a creed. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The three in one.
We believe in the Holy Spirit and He's given us new life. We believe. join together in this prayer of confession. God, you come to us in many ways, and your followers have many experiences of you. And yet we confess that we often judge others for not experiencing you just like we do, for not coming to faith or living faith just as we do. We confess also that there are times that we intentionally refuse the new life you call us to, opting instead to live life as though we had never encountered you. Forgive us. Have mercy on me.
Hear now the good news. God so loved the world and you that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not be lost but may share in the life of God's new age. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. You are free again to live a spirit-led life. Amen. Now we come to a time of prayer. I'll begin praying, and then in just a moment we'll be lighting candles. I invite you to come forward as household units. If you'd like to light a candle and place it in uh, the sand in front of me here, it's a symbol of you and me bringing our prayers, our joys and our sorrows, into the light of Jesus Christ. So let's pray. Lord God, thank you. Thank you for revealing yourself to us in ways that we can experience. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God, though we don't really grasp it all, may we experience it. May we experience you in those ways. May we know that we are loved beyond measure. God, shower your world with your spirit, your healing spirit. Where there is division, bring wholeness. Where there is suffering, bring peace. Where there is illness, bring health. God, we pray for our loved ones who are, are sick, those who are dying, those facing surgeries. We pray for your spirit of healing to be among the nations. We pray for your spirit of reconciliation that we might experience that between races in this country one year after the murder of George Floyd. Pretty poignant in this state. God be with our president and our governor and their administrations. With United States senators and congressmen and state senators and congressmen as well. That they might govern justly and wisely. Be with your church. Be with this church, this congregation, that we can be a family of faith that makes a difference in the lives of people all over the world. And God, we pray, we cry out for an end to this pandemic. And God, move in the hearts of all your people to help them to decide to be part of the solution. God, hear now our prayers as we come into your presence.
the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. God, remember us in your love and to teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So those of you in the sanctuary taking your prepackaged elements, and if you don't, I think it, everyone might. If you don't, there's more out there. But take that, and now is the time to uh, pull back just the cellophane layer, the top layer, uh, to reveal the, the wafer. Those of you at home, take your bread, and together we eat the body of Christ given for you. Pulling back the foil layer to get to the grape juice. And those of you at home, take your wine or your grape juice and together we drink the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the blessing of God and the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace and his truth and his life now and forever. Amen. I invite you to stand, those of you who are in the sanctuary, and join us singing Glorious Day. It is such a glorious day. A little cool today, but... It <laughs> this is what makes us love it. <laughs> right, guys? Right. <laughs> One day we're in
I'm going to say, go in peace and serve the Lord. <laughs> Thanks be to God. All right.